know, this was such news to me. People break bones in their backs. They don't even know about it sometime, and they don't even go to doctors. It's very strange. Well, I have a doctor with us today who's going to tell us about that, Dr. Joshua Abrams, orthopedic spine surgeon with the CORE Institute. Nice to have you on with us. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Wow. Well, did I get that right? People actually break bones in their back, and they don't even realize, and they don't go to a doctor about it? Unfortunately, that is the case. Nearly 70% of compression fractures go left untreated. Wow, and so compression, is this when you jump off stairs or something? You, it could. Something happens, you fall, whatever, and you break? Maybe falling off a ladder, hanging Christmas lights, or any uh, other condition. So yeah. falling is probably the most common way to fracture a bone, but it can happen from a sneeze or anything else, depending on how fragile the bones are. And why? Some people have more fragile bones than others. Some of, uh, hopefully, some of us have stronger bones, but some don't. What's what? Well, unfortunately, 50% of people over the age of 50 do have some degree of bone loss, and so that, that can vary depending on how much bone loss you have. And a severe form of that is osteoporosis, mm -hmm. and how fragile your bones are will dictate how quickly or easily those bones can fracture. Is it most often women, Dr. Abrams? Because I, I know that we need more calcium than guys as we get older, but do guys get osteoporosis as well? They do. Mm -hmm. uh, men can have osteoporosis as well, no doubt. Um, women are at a higher risk factor. There's many variables and many risk factors, and, and unfortunately, women postmenopausal are at the highest risk. And, and why is that? Do they lose more calcium? Is that primarily it? Calcium or? is a component of it. It's, okay. it's all about bone metabolism, and bone metabolism, as we get older, just slows down. And for women, after menopause, it, it, it's even slower. I tell you, women are so lucky. I mean, I love being a girl, but we have more issues than you boys do. We really do, don't we? I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Trust me. Yes, take my word for it. Okay, so osteoporosis, is that primarily what you see causing, primarily like your, your bone fractures then? Yes, osteoporosis is the biggest risk okay. factor for fragility fractures. And unfortunately, these, they, like you said earlier, they go often left untreated. Okay, so if you you break or you fracture a bone or you know compress mm -hmm. one in, in your back, how can you a not know that you broke part of your back, or two not go to a doctor about it? Isn't it painful? They they typically are very painful. Most of them are, um, and unfortunately, some people think that back pain is a way of life, and and it doesn't necessarily have to mm. be. An acute episode is back, of back pain is definitely a reason to seek medical treatment. And so, un unfortunately, people don't seek medical treatment sometimes. Is it because they think, oh, it's, they're not going to be able to fix it, or it's just me, I'm a whiny baby? <laughs> I mean, what do yeah, you think? sometimes it's the access to health care. Sometimes it's, uh, like I said, people live with many different ailments, and they feel, feel that this is just one, another ailment. Mm -hmm. um, there's very variable reasons why people don't seek treatment, but unfortunately, it does go left untreated frequently. And so what happens when somebody comes to you and, and they may not know that they've uh, actually broken bones in their spine or whatever, and you take a look and you tell them, and then, and then where does it go from there? Well, uh, we have to do a, an appropriate uh, history and, and, and workup for, for evaluation. Sometimes it's dependent on uh, diagnostic information, x-rays or MRIs or additional imaging to really diagnose that fracture. And then from there, there's different types of treatments, whether we... we uh, seek a, u utilize a brace to stabilize that fracture. So okay. is that so it can heal, excuse me, so it, yes. with a brace that would be just like, hey, it's going to be okay if we just hold you still for a little while. Correct. Most bones, the wonderful thing about orthopedics, most bones will heal on their own. It's just a matter of stabilizing those bones. Brace, a brace can help stabilize that bone to allow enough time for it to heal on its own. To keep it in the right place. Correct. Because they will, you know, they'll mend like... <laughs> they will. Bones <laughs> heal. That's the beautiful thing about orthopedics. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of those bones continue to be painful. And after you trial conservative management, there are other procedures that can help stabilize those bones internally. Well, obviously, you don't glue them. Of course, I'm not really sure, because I know you can use super glue in, like, wounds. Okay, I know that's not your specialty, but that's what I found out. No. Well, well, there is a procedure that is kind of like a gluing type of procedure, oh. and that's what we're here to talk about, the procedure called kyphoplasty. And it's a minimally invasive procedure that we can do through very small incisions, and what we can do is actually put glue, or bone glue, if you will, <laughs> right. to stabilize that fracture. Amazing. So you, th that way it really keeps it in place. Do you still need to wear a brace then after it's kind of angry? No. no. So the beauty of this procedure is that through, again, through these small incisions, we use these cannulas that go inside the bone. We inflate a balloon. That balloon kind of ho opens up that space where the fracture is now compressed down. It opens it up. And then after we remove the balloon, 
we put some bone glue or bone cement there that will now interdigitate into the fracture to stabilize it. Okay, that's amazing. So we're showing some images of that. So mm -hmm. now is this, this is within like the vertebrae, not, goes with, not in the discs between this balloon. Correct. Cut. It actually goes inside the broken bone. What, and, and why do you need to separate it that much? To see what's going on and get it back together, correct, or why? Well, as you see, um, as, we, if, as, as women or men develop these fractures, they might start to develop more of a, uh, a kyphotic or, or hunched, proceed, or hunched over position okay. as we get older. Now, the point of the balloon is to stabilize that bone and open it up so it doesn't continue to compress down oh. and lead toward that, that kyphotic position. So that balloon opens that space up and then creates a void for that bone cement. Okay, that's like leveling a piece of furniture, if you will, where you have to put like a shim under it. You're to kind some of degree, shimming sure. the bones. Yeah. And this grows in, and I mean, then your bone stays that way forever. Mm -hmm. You still have movement, whereas I know sometimes people have to have, you know, sp their spine melded together, which then they lose a lot of movement. This is a completely different type of procedure. Wow. Again, a minimally invasive procedure that's about a two-day recovery, and from there you have no restrictions. Phenomenal. Well, I... Great. So prevention, people should, number one, prevent this. You have some hints for that? 70% of people are, are left untreated with osteoporosis. So the first stage is prevention. Again, early, early in life, it's all about diet and exercise. And then as we get older, it's a matter of, again, uh, supplementing with vitamin D, calcium, and then there's other medications out there that I recommend discussing with your doctor to talk about preventing osteoporosis. Yeah, absolutely. So this balloon thing is relatively new, the balloon and... and well, it's actually Blue. been around quite a, quite some time, <laughs> and uh, but again, as we as we have an aging population, it just gets left untreated. So it's it's definitely worth revisiting. And this makes a big difference for people. My guess is pain-wise and appearance-wise. Absolutely. Wow. So again, such a, a, a short recovery period, it, it gets people back on their feet and feeling much better very quickly. Well, I tell you, that, that's an amazing thing to hear because your back and your knees, you lose those, you have trouble. That's true. <laughs> As we get older, we start being very sensitive about you know, taking care of those things. And I guess if you have pain in your back, for heaven's sake, go to the doctor, right? Absolutely. All right. Dr. Joshua Abrams, the Core Institute Orthopedic Spine Surgeon in Phoenix. Thanks so much for joining Thank us, Dr. Thank you very Abrams. much. Appreciate it. Great you. tips. We're going to all do better. Take more vitamins and go to the doctor if we have pain in our back. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Don't go away. When we come back, we are going to have some live Western music from a guy from New Mexico. We'll be right back.